Computer running slow? Has your machine somehow acquired a life of its own? Or do you simply desire a deeper and more meaningful connection? Be one with your operating system. It's Arizona's computer guru, Mike Swanson, and his show starts now. Listen in, chat in, and watch live streaming at guruShow.com. Want your voice to be heard? Call in with your questions and riddles. The number is 520-790-2040. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030, KVOI, The Voice. Hello and welcome to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. This is, see, this is what happens. I didn't bring my own headphones and now I don't. I sound weird. You sound weird to anyway. Me. Oh, it's sound weird anyway? Okay. All so right. do I. We all do. I can dig it. 790-2040 if you want to participate in your two hours of tech support. But you got a, you got a weird look going on over there. It sounds funny to me, too. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know either. It's kind of almost echoey. Yeah, it's almost like a... I don't know. I blame the previous show. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. Let me look into that while you're... All right. 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show. It's your two hours of tech support. You know what it sounds like? What's it sounds it like? like your mic's not on and it's being picked up by one of the other mics. Is it? Is my mic even on? Yeah, my mic's on. Let's try this other one. Let's see what happens. I'm going to try it. See? Oh, look at that. This mic is screwed. Turn that one off. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's that's a, that's a little better. Troubleshooting yeah, one-on-one. One. problem. Ah, it's still weird, though. There's just some over-modulations and... See, look, Charles calling in to fix it. That's what's going on. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so if you want to be part of the show, 790-2040, we'd love to hear from you. You can uh, you can lay your technology problems on us, and we will solve them, unlike our mic situation over here, because that's what we do. Uh, what, what are we going to open with today? Webcam hacks? Sure. All right. So there's lots of people out there who have these little webcams that you can buy. Mm-hmm. Get them uh, relatively cheaply, um, th- and a lot of people use them for like you know checking on their kids and stuff. Baby while, monitors. Yeah, while they're while they're at work or they um, kind of watching the dogs mostly. You know, th- 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 I was lo- I, when I saw this story, I started you know googling around, going, well, how how prevalent are these cameras? Mm-hmm. And the, the, lots of people have these cameras. In fact, there are entire websites dedicated. To the eventual subject of this story. Wow. So, um, turns out that there was a uh, a person that was like traveling the world with with uh, Google Maps, mm-hmm. which a lot of people do. This is a great way to do a little little plan out your vacation or just kind of visit other places of the world from the comfort of your own home. You know, you, you don't necessarily need to. You know, I don't know, get up and get off your butt or anything so you can just travel the world like that. I, I do that. <laughs> I know. You give me that look, but yeah. I know. It's, I'm just teasing you. All right. Uh, so anyway, they were, they were out cruising around and they, they ended up uh, stumbling across a webcam from a location and it basically, you know, you're watching this lady's kids. They were, you know, they didn't, they were just going about their day, <laughs> and uh, it turned into this giant Facebook thing where this lady was like, "Yeah, you know, holy moly! Can you please just find this person in the city and tell them that they've got an open camera?" Yeah, right. Because this this camera's running, and there are young children that are just going about their lives unaware that they're being viewed by the entire world, and. Eventually, they, somebody got a hold of the, the right person, and mm-hmm. they shut down the camera. But it's just like with anything else. You have to secure these things. There are websites that are dedicated to open cameras that have been found on the Internet. Yeah, you don't want to be the beta test for Truman Show. Yeah, and that's pretty much what it is. Mm-hmm. It turns the, this entire community of webcam owners, they don't know that they're being watched. It's just streaming out to the world and because they never changed the default password on the camera. That, that's like the first thing you should do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second thing. Plug it in. Change the password. That's, that's that's how this works. Yeah. If you leave the, the password default, you're going to be watched. 
effectively. And this is another thing where we talk about uh, turning off UPnP. There's this, there's a, uh, a setting in your router. It's called UPnP. Mm-hmm. It's the universal plug and play. And it programs your router to allow the camera to work outside of your network. It was designed to make it easier for people to be able to hook up these cameras and, and be able to view them from outside. Well, it makes it a little too easy. Because the router programs itself, you don't change the password on your camera, and then suddenly your camera is streaming out to the world and people are watching you without you knowing it. I mean, the, I'm pretty sure it's the same people who put, you know, tape over their webcam on their laptop that have these cameras that don't change the password. It's, come on, change your password. I mean, how hard is that? How difficult is that? By the way, if you need help, I can help you do that. Because I can just I can just imagine there there are things that you don't want seen, right? Everybody has you don't want the world watching you at all times. No, I'm sure that there are moments that you would prefer to have some privacy. That's all I'm saying. It's oh, it's 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 crazy. <sighs> so if you need any help with that type of stuff, let me know. And, and it's one of the things that we talk about all the time on the show. What is it? Backups and changing passwords. Mm-hmm. Change your passwords. I think those are the top two. Yeah. we. Because every time that there's a story, it's like, all right, this could have been prevented. All you needed to do is either have a backup or change your password. And this trauma that you're calling in about probably could have been averted. Even people who haven't called in with trauma, the the articles we read with trauma <laughs> are usually password or backup related. Yeah. And, well, and don't fall for Microsoft calling you. Yeah, that too. Or uh, they've actually, they've kind of stopped with the whole Microsoft thing. Now they're just, this is your antivirus company calling. Oh, no. And uh, and a lot of people fall for it. And uh, just yesterday, there was someone who called me up and they had a... Uh, a browser hijack where they, you know, it was basically saying, hey, you need to give us a call at this phone number so that we can clean up your computer. And uh, we used to be able to say that they had a 20% success rate with these types of things. And it seems like the trend is going the other direction, and it's sad because now it looks like their success rate is somewhere around 40%. And if you think, you know, you get this little pop-up on your computer... And forty percent of the people call and get them to to you know basically they call and pay two hundred dollars. That's a lot of money to have their computer fixed with air quotes, giant exaggerated <laughs> air quotes. Um, it's it's I just I I find it really hard to believe. And I and I told the guy I'm glad that you didn't call that phone number and he goes well I'm not that dumb and. I, I'm just in my head, I'm being quiet because I'm just like, there are lots of people that are. All right. And they just think, well, rather than having to call the computer guy or rather than just going and downloading malware bytes or, you know, some other cleanup tool, they would rather pay that $200 than, you know, wait for the inconvenience of having to schedule an appointment or whatever. And so one of the reasons that we offer one of the services we do at Computer Guru is for that. Right. We have the, the GPS service or Guru Protection Services. You call up. We can log in immediately, solve the problem for you, and leave. And it's way cheaper than that $200 that you would have ended up paying to get it resolved. So, you know, consider it. Give us a call at the shop if you, you know, want more information or send me an email. You can email me, radio at, my, uh, radio at azcomputerguru.com. Radio at my time. Yeah, yeah, radio at me. <laughs> radio at my name. So, let's take a moment to mention our sponsor. That would be Perfection Auto Works. You can visit their new website at perfectionautoworks.com and listen to their ad that's coming up next. What they do right now is a 26-point inspection for free. Free? It's my favorite number for free. Unless, unless of course, it's a service I provide and then free is... (laughs) Not such a good number. No, well, you know, you got to keep the lights on. It turns out that employees are expensive. Yeah. They really are. I'm sure Mike knows about that over Perfection All Works. Like I said, listen to his ad, because they have funny ads. It's coming up next, and make sure you give them a call and tell them the computer guru sent you. We'll be right back.
Computer troubles? Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOY, The Voice. Your technology guru, Mike Swanson, is answering all your questions one by one. Yes, science! So chime in with yours. The website is gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is a Computer Guru Show. You know, they should probably just have me re-voice that Marines commercial. The few, the proud, I mean, I, I, the Marines. That, that commercial, like, physically hurts me. That's how I mean, all I understand of the... This, I understand the sentiment. Great. That's wonderful. But, man, that voiceover is terrible. I actually <laughs> did a, uh, a focus group in L.A. over a decade ago right. on commercials for the Marines, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, and Army. And I had to watch those for three hours. Wow. And you got like five bucks. No, it was like 50, yeah. but it was just one bad. Ten bucks an hour. I guess. I was 19. I don't know if I could put up with that for three hours. It was just bad. be like that. Dude, you need to work on your voice. I was in delayed entry. I wasn't doing anything anyway. You're boring. So extra money. So if you want to be part of the chat, you can. You can go to gurushow.com slash chat if you just want the chat, if you're listening already. Um, for those of you who can't hear me, you can go to listen live. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... well, I mean, in case you want to walk away from your radio and take the show with you. Okay. There you see. go. See? Yeah, Not but... that they can't hear you now. Gurushow.com slash chat if you want to uh, participate. And we have a couple of questions in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them is about... They have a Mac and want to talk about external hard drives. Which one should they get? And they're listing brands. And yeah, they, and they I know said, how you are with brands. They said the S word. I can't believe it. Yeah. I'm going to say it right now on the radio. Seagate. It's oh, chills. Oh, no, it's just, <laughs> oh. Not the Seagate. Don't do the Seagate. Seagate is terrible. Oh, by the way, uh, all of the opinions ex- expressed on this show are my own and uh, do not necessarily re- reflect the radio station or Arizona Computer Guru. It is just me. Yeah. Yeah. Just you. Yeah. Don't sue me, please. Anyway, Seagate <laughs> is terrible, and uh, they have a failure rate that is excessive, in my opinion. I-M-O. So uh, I would stay away from the Seagates. Now, when it comes to the Macs and you're doing backups and stuff like that, Honestly, it depends on your your skill level. But for a lot of people with Macs, I just say, go down to the Apple Store and go buy the time capsule because it just it's simple and easy. They 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 made a backup to, called the time capsule. Yes, it goes with the time machine. On, Does it seriously? Yeah. So the app for backups on a Mac is called Time Machine, and uh, it connects to uh, if you like something called Time Capsule which is all of the backups of your Mac, so you can step back through history. Um, it's kind of okay. nice. You obviously have no Mac skills. I've worked on a Mac, like, once in college, and that was pretty much it. Now, let's say that you want to just go the manual route. You're like, I'm not interested in doing the, the fancy connected-to-my-network time capsule, mm-hmm. and you just want to plug in an external hard drive. Honestly, the the Western Digitals are probably, as far as... If you want to get something that's relatively affordable and has a decent reliability rate, then the Western Digital Drives are probably what you're going to go after. Because if you if you really want nice ones, uh, yeah, the HGST ones, yeah, you have to order those special online, and they're really expensive, but they last forever. So there oh, there good. is that uh, there is that. Um, the Western Digitals are always cheap, ish. And you can pick them up at like Best Buy, SWS, any of these places that sell hard drives, sectional hard drives. And uh, I would recommend that you stay away from the greater than four terabytes because they sell like six terabyte externals now. Um, and with those super high capacity drives, we see a higher failure rate, so a corruption rate. So I would go with like a, a three terabyte, something like that, which is plenty large for most people. So that, that's the recommendation to answer the chat question. There you go, Audrey. All you. Thank you, Audrey, uh, for asking a yeah, question. Thank you for asking a question. Anyway, if you want to get in on the chat, gurushow.com slash chat. There you go. There we are. What's, <laughs> what's next? I don't even know. Which, i got too many tabs open in front of me. I don't, even I don't know. know, and I'm just seeing pictures of Napoleon Dynamite and Time Machine <laughs> stuff in the chat. 
It is amusing. It's nice. The chat is a little distracting, which and so if you wonder why I'm not responding to the chat, it's probably because I'm not looking at it because there's probably some distraction. Which is why I am not talking as much usually. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, where, hold on, where am I? I we lo- have a lot of stuff. I lost on the show my notes, show notes. But they're, they're there. A okay. lot. All right. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about while we have a few minutes left is that there's a lot of people that are unhappy about the Windows 10 thing. Yeah. About the way Microsoft is handling things in general. And, and me too, to a certain extent. Yeah. Oftentimes, you know, people will say, well, what do you think? And my answer is a very political, well, what choice do you have? Yeah. And so it's, you don't necessarily have a choice. It's... If you're going to live in the Windows platform, you're going to do what Microsoft tells you to do, or else. And or else move. Right. So what we're working on, uh, I'm actively working on a Linux configuration as a replacement for um, Windows. So there is that. And hopefully in the next three weeks, maybe a month, I should have a working config that we would be able to apply to just about anyone Mm -hmm. to say, if you want to get out of the Microsoft ecosystem, if you want to just say, I want a a PC that is um, not Windows, has all the privacy, and is compatible enough with my world in order to function, I may be able to have that happen for you in in the next few weeks while we're working on this. Also, um, tired of dealing with Microsoft servers? That one's first, and I should have that one done in about a week. Nice. Where, where we will be able to replace just about any Microsoft server with a Linux-compatible system and get you out of those licensing fees. Because do you know how much it costs? You know, no. Let's, take a, <laughs> let's just take an idea. Or, or, it, it, let's make up a scenario here where you are a small to medium-sized business here in Tucson. Mm-hmm. You happen to have, let's say, two servers. Okay. You got one that's running all of your like network stuff. Mm-hmm. It's handling domain. It's handling DHCP. All these other things that make your network work. Right. And uh, then you got another one that's like a file server. Okay. Uh, maybe it does mail. Maybe that one does mail too. Um, just the cost on licensing. Oh, by the way, you have ten users. Mm-hmm. So in this in this scenario. Okay. So just in licensing, you're looking at sixteen hundred dollars for the Operating systems themselves for the two machines. If you have, uh, and you also need five additional licenses because you have ten users. And right. It comes with five. So there's another $450. And uh, then you're doing mail. Mm-hmm. There's $2,000 oh to add gosh. that on top of it for licensing. Um, oh, and you want to hook up some fancy external hard drive to it for backups and files? Uh, okay. There's an extra $400. So that's just licensing cost, not operational cost for those machines. And so what I want to do is I want to find a way that it will cost you less than $100 for licensing to pull all of that off. Hmm. I would be highly interested. <laughs> so there's, there's a possibility that I can probably save, you know, $5,000 off of your licensing fees if I can pull this off. And I already know I can, so... Um, I just need to find a a way to make it so it's less configuration time. Because right now, if I were to do this, it would take me seven or eight hours of configuration to pull that off. And I want to see if I can knock that down to maybe two hours. And if I can, then everything is cheap enough to to justify it, to say, okay, let's let's make everything cheaper. Oh, and by the way, here's the upside. Considerably greater reliability. Like, I've got a Linux server at the office Mm -hmm. that outside of a major power outage that happened um, two years ago, the thing has not been off in six years. Nice. And and not even been rebooted Mm -hmm. other than that particular power outage. So there is a reliability that comes with those systems that is just unheard of when it comes to Microsoft servers. Anyway. We're going to see if we can save you some money, some operational overhead costs, mm-hmm. and uh, and this fun project gives me 
because I'm a nerd and that's what I find fun. <laughs> um, it's trying to figure hey, out whatever how to make... you do, you do you, okay? <laughs> Like, you know, some people like to go out and do things. I like to uh, configure servers. I, I don't know. I'm just weird that way, I guess. You're not the only weird one. It's okay. If you'd like to be part of the show and be on the show after our upcoming break here, you can give us a call, 790-2040. That's 520-790-2040 if you are outside of the Tucson area. We are happy to help you out with whatever technology issues are ailing you at this moment. Or maybe, you know, you got a friend. Kent's always got a friend. I always think it's Kent. <laughs> I think I think it's just his friend. We'll be right back after these messages. Whether you're dealing with hardware installation or heaven forbid, a virus. Oh. No! No! Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. So call in or chat in with yours. The website, gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030 KVOY The Voice. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person of the process. 790-2040, if you have a question for the show, that's uh, you know, 790-2040. I'll help you out. Lay it on me. There's another chat question, though. Got someone asking about uh, iCloud storage and what the deal is and do backups get overwritten and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, which I don't know anything about, so that's yeah, we've you already, again. <laughs> we've already covered your uh, your, I, your, yeah. your Mac technology need, or, uh, skill I, set I this played morning. on, like, Photoshop, and that was pretty much it. Yeah. You know, back in my day, it was just Oregon Trail on, on the Apple II. Man, I miss Oregon Trail. It's such a great game. It really yeah. is. Always died of dysentery. But, Everybody you know, dies of dysentery. And, and or you break an axle and someone falls off into the river. Yeah, but then you die of dysentery. Everybody dies yeah. of dysentery <laughs> in Oregon Trail. That's how this works. Dysentery must have been a big deal back in the early 80s. Yeah. And then you'd lose your stuff. <laughs> Couldn't back up to iCloud back then. You could not. All right. So the question is, is, uh, is iCloud is saying that they're completely out of space all the time? And they want to know why. Well, part of it is because of your... Phone backups, right? You have a phone or an iPad or some device that is backing up to it. And the the question or the answer is no, it does not overwrite backups. It keeps older backups, sort of. Um, iCloud's a little weird about how it deals with space. So if you really want to go in there and wipe a backup out, you have to manually do it. And part of it is because micro, I'm sorry, Apple wants you to buy more space. And it's not terribly expensive. So if you do use it often and you want to be able to back up the stuff that is currently on your phone, as in, uh, you know, the new pictures that you take or any other types of things, and have a system backup of your phone, then you're going to need that extra space. Otherwise, um, you can just stop cloud syncing your regular files and just back up, use the, the space for storing a backup of your phone. So effectively what you're doing is two different types of backups that are happening at the same time. So it doubles up the space that you're using. Hopefully that answers the question. So either turn off Cloud Sync and make it so that your photos and new stuff that you put on your phone isn't backed up, and it just does system backups at night, or the other way around. Stop it from doing system backups, turn the backup feature off, and use Cloud Sync for everything else. So there's there's an option there for at least saving some room in there. Now, the third option is just to, you know, give Apple some money and they'll give you more room. You do what you want there. There you go. Personally, I pay for the extra room. And I just I just have an iPad. You know, it's not even a daily use thing. I don't even think I've turned the thing on in four months. <clears throat> I feel bad about that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> <sighs> I have a question. I have and too much technology. This is not in the show notes. Okay. And what? it's something that I've been looking at. Have you heard of MDISC? Sounds familiar. For backups. It's, it does sound familiar. It's though. a new disc. It's supposed to be carbon-based, blah, 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 blah. It's supposed to last for a 1,000 years as opposed to a regular DVD or 
Blu-ray disc that corrodes over 10, 25 years. Huh. So I didn't know if you had heard of that or not. I remember hearing try something to get in about touch it, with them. but I have this, this automatic prejudice towards external media. Right. Uh, as far as I, I, I think anything that you have to like burn to a disc, it, that whole technology for me is dead. Yeah. Well, they, they talk about on their website how they're against DVDs and CDs because they just, they can crack, they can scratch, you know. And they're expensive. Um, they're expensive. Hard drives fail after what, like five years, one to five years, depending on brand. Right. Um, and then they just go on and on. Flash drive media doesn't last all that long. Uh, it can be corrupted pretty easily. So that's their like driving force of this is going to last you a thousand years. Huh. I wonder how they tested that. I don't know. It's been tested, I guess, by the DOD. So, you know, take that. But so they, they got their time machine. Yeah. Yeah. Went for a thousand years and said, yep, still readable. Yeah, I guess so. I don't, I don't, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm going to look into them some more, but that seems interesting to me. I like the idea of having some type of like permanent backup. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of having a backup somewhere, as you know, yeah. as we talk about all the time, have a backup. In fact, you should have two. But, um, you know, maybe putting one, if you have very, very sensitive, irreplaceable data, pictures, stuff like that, um, then, yeah, you have an external and you put it somewhere in a safe at, in your deposit box at the bank or whatever. Um, just somewhere separate from you. Mm-hmm. That way, if you need it, it's there. I like the idea of having that. As far as, you know, like these new technologies, especially if they're like disk-based. Yeah. Um, and they're effectively static storage, which has some benefits, right? It's written, it's done, you mm-hmm. can't make any changes to it. That's great. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm i like one of these people that when my birthday comes around, mm-hmm. people will give me things sometimes when, I'm, when I've been good that year. <laughs> um, I have this issue where I, I cannot fully appreciate things that are not useful. Mm-hmm. Like, they have to be, like, very useful in everyday life. There has to be daily applications for, or, you know, at least it has to have some sort of real functionality. So no tchotchkes for you is what right. you're saying. It's not my thing. No. Um, just because I'm all about, and, and the sad part is it makes me a terrible gift giver because <laughs> um, I'm always giving things that are useful. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, well, some people just... Are, you know. I actually look forward to socks during Christmas now. <laughs> so, the whole having a functional use is is kind of important, and I find I have a hard time adapting to, like, hey, let's go ahead and get the Blu-ray discs and start burning those, because they're not, for me, not useful on a di- on any sort of level. Mm-hmm. Right? All of my digital media is like cloud stored in my own personal yeah. cloud that I've built for myself. So I have a really hard time with the, well, let's go ahead and try out this new technology that is effectively chiseling into stone, mm-hmm. you know, in, in the computer comparison. Mm-hmm. And uh, so whenever I hear about these technologies, I'm a little like, come on now. Aren't we, aren't we like 10 years past that already? <laughs> it's the current yeah. year. Come on. Yeah, you should see the video for this. It really pulls at the heartstrings. Are they talking about pictures and stuff? Yeah, they get a bunch of people and have them bring their their old storage, and they get they are all excited to plug it in and see what's on it, and it's all gone. None of it's there, and so like you've got this one guy, his dad has pa- had passed away, and it was the last thirty days of his dad's life, gone. Another guy, it was a book. This other woman, it was all her children's baby photos and stuff, all gone. Right. And they said 30%, I think it was 30% of people have lost data and don't even know it yet. Yeah. And one of the things that we talk about often on the show is that an unverified backup is no backup. Yeah. All right. If you don't know that that stuff is there and retrievable, if you can't verify it and prove it's there. It might as well not be. It's Schrodinger's data. It just doesn't exist at that point. So um, let's go ahead and take a call. We're going to go ahead and talk to Robin. Hello, Robin. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? Good. Good. You know how Verizon wants you to install system updates periodically on the cell phone? Yes. Is there any way to get around that or not have to do that? 
Why would you not want to? Seems like every time I do it, my phone runs slower and it uses more data or something changes in the background that I can't find or I'm not sure what happened. Just um, I know there's some beneficial things to it, but I've, I'm seeing some negatives and I don't know, not tech savvy enough to go in there and figure out what they've done, what has changed, but usually it has to do with more data being used and it's slower. So okay. just wanted to see what you thought on that. Well, the first thing I think is a majority of those system updates are, some of them are functional, all right, depending on what type of update they're doing, but most of them are security-based up, you know, updates. Mm-hmm. So I usually tell people, go ahead and get the update. I mean, what, how, old your, how old is your phone? Two years now. What kind is it? LG G3. Well, the LGs are a little underpowered, so you would definitely be feeling the, the pain of an upgrade. It would make the phone slower. Yes. Yeah. It's definitely acting up as far. Uh, the other question I had was, I'm noticing the buttons when I along the periphery of the phone. It's taking a lot longer to access or for them to work. Have you heard of that before? Like the one or whatever num you know number or button is along the edge. Right. So the soft buttons, which is what those are called. Okay. Um, there's a couple of softwares that I there's a software I would try on an older phone. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, I don't remember the name of it off the top of my hand, off the top of my head. My daughter has it on her phone because I give her my old phones. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so she gets she gets the the underpowered phones when I yeah. upgrade. Um, okay. But there's a, a like C Cleaner makes an application. I don't know if you're familiar with C Cleaner. They make computer cleanup tools, right? It deletes temporary files and speeds the, the computer up. Well, they F-E-A? make a version. It's the letter C and then the word cleaner. C, oh, okay. So C cleaner, okay. Got it. Um, which stands for crap cleaner, by the way. Um, oh, okay. So they make a version for the phone that uh, helps speed up the phone a bit, gets rid of a bunch of stuff that you don't need and, okay. and cleans things up a little bit. Right. I would try that just to see if it helps a little bit. Um, okay. The other thing is is that most people don't like clear off the old applications they have on their phones. Right. Um, so if you've got something you haven't used in a long time, I would just get rid of it, help okay. speed the phone up. Also, um, on those, especially on the LG phones, they give you an option to store everything to the SD card that's on there. Right. And those SD cards actually wear out over time, and they slow down. Mm-hmm. So it might be worth the $15 investment to get a newer, faster SD card to stick in the in the phone. Okay, I'll look into it. Thanks for your help. No problem. Thanks for the call. Bye-bye. Let's move right along here. We're going to go ahead and go to Barbara. Hello, Barbara. How are you? Yes, sir. Hi, I'm fine. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, I'm getting messages when I pull up email daily, uh, numerous times, actually. And if I forward something on to whoever I know, whatever it is, I keep getting these messages back saying, mail system failure or mail system delay uh, now, I've checked in there, and the names that are coming up where it's like it's being a failure, I don't even recognize them. Some of them look foreign. Um, I've just been deleting it all along, but it, it, I, it shouldn't be a virus. I just had my uh, whole computer scrubbed of malware, viruses, and spyware, all that stuff, just a couple of days ago, and it's still showing up, these these things on my email, what am I doing wrong or why are that? I get so many political emails anymore. And could it be something that is attached to all those things? <coughs> okay. So let's let's start with your infection. Okay. Um, when you, right, you got the machine cleaned and uh, we're, what kind of cleaning did they do? Did they reinstall the machine, or was it just a, a cleanup? Or? Uh, no, it was uh, my the company that I go through for. I, I have a bundle pack: computer, phone, and inter, and TV. And I call the company. Can I tell you the name of the company? Or you can if you like. Well, it was CenturyLink. Right through them, so I, I contacted them. They got me to the technical department, and uh, it took like over almost five hours. My computer was going. I could see it. I could watch it. 
and different things that went through a file. It, I mean, it took forever. And so I got this message that, you know, it's all done because I had requested, um, you know, to get get rid of all that. I thought maybe it had a, a, you know, a spyware virus, whatever. And were you getting these these email messages during or before the last couple of days? Yes. Okay. And I thought they'd be gone after I had everything all cleaned off. But okay, I'm still so getting them let, let's morning. talk about how the email systems work. And so possibility number one is that whenever you, let's say that you get an infection and your machine is sending out mail in large volumes to all kinds of places that it's trying to spam everybody using okay. your account. Okay. And a lot of those accounts that it's trying to, to send to you are going to be fake or outdated or there's going to be some other delivery problem, which is the, those messages you're getting back are the problems with the delivery that you were trying to send to, or your machine was trying to send to. Now, the typical half-life for mail is 48 hours, meaning that from the moment your machine stops sending spam, you've got generally about 48, sometimes 72 hours, where mail will continue to retry, even though your machine stops sending them, it's out there in the world trying to be delivered. And at some point, those other servers give up, and then they send you a message back saying, well, we've given up, we can't send this message because they think that you legitimately sent it. So part of it is just the half-life of mail, and, and that's that's a good portion of it. Now, the the part that concerns me is that a lot of the, the, the infections that are out there are actually key loggers, or they're, they find a way to make you give them your mail password. Okay, I changed my password on the mail also. That was something else I did. Good. And you did that after the cleanup or before? After. Okay, good. So I think that these will probably just stop on their own uh, over the next 24 hours or so. Oh, okay. So it, uh, there's just the way that mail works is that when you send a message out, it gets routed through other servers trying to get to the destination. And that other server, first of all, doesn't know that you didn't really send that. It, it, uh, it just treats it as a regular piece of mail, and it tries its best to deliver that message for up to a couple of days, maybe a few days even. Uh-huh. And then after that, it gives up and sends a message back. So I think you're just seeing the residual. It's called backscatter. So Okay, but, but these are, when I click on to see, you know, I used to get those real fr- infrequently. Like maybe I sent to somebody that it, it came back, and I could click on it, and it would tell me who who it didn't go to. Right. And I'd recognize the name. The ones that they're showing me now, I mean, these are names, like I said, some of them look foreign even. And, and they probably are. It's The infection itself doesn't, it's not using your address book, or it's not using people that you under, you know, you know, would know these people. Okay. So somebody else had control of your computer, effectively, in the background, and was sending out mail as you. Oh, for heaven's sake. So. Oh, that's not. That's not cool. It's, it's totally not cool. So now that you've gotten gotten it cleaned up, and I'm glad that you did, um, then th- that should stop. But you're going to have to give it some time. You're going to have to put up with it for a couple of days. Okay, okay, yeah, because when I saw it again this morning, I thought, oh, gee, there was two of them. One said failure, one said delay. Right, uh, well, the delay just, don't worry about the, the difference between the two. They're okay. both just trying to deliver mail. It's outside servers trying to deliver mail. It can't. It's letting you know it can't, and that's all there is to it. Okay, okay. Well, that makes me feel better because I thought, geez, you know, if I still had viruses after all that I went through and it cost me, I was not very happy. Uh, I would tell you that, uh, you know, of course, the, the disclaimer that everything I say is my own opinion and, and doesn't represent the radio station, um, the... Middle East virus removals that you get when you call CenturyLink are generally not of the greatest quality. So um, I would be at least vigilant. So I'm, I'm glad you're at least watching. And But okay. give us a call down at Computer Guru if you have any future problems. Okay, well, if I, yeah, if I do, you guys, I could bring my computer into you, and you guys would be able to fix it too, correct? Oh, yeah, or? and we do those remote things just like they do as far as we can okay. log in and fix things. Yeah, that's what it was. It was all remote, so... Okay, well, I appreciate your your information and your um, 
your help. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Have a nice day. You too, sir. Bye. All right. If you'd like to be part of the show, 790-2040. We'll be right back after these messages. Computer troubles? Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOY, The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at guruShow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show on KBOI, The Voice. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to go through technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040, just like Kevin did. Let's go ahead and talk to Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Hey, Mike. Good morning. Thanks for taking the call. Okay, mm-hmm. mark the tape. I told Rob I'd call him this week. I didn't. He's not going to hear from me for two weeks on the web page, so I know he's listening to that. So everybody out there listening, you'll know that that's done. But we'll leave that alone. What I really called for was three questions. Password program. you got a program that you recommend? I use Dashlane. D- I'm sorry. D- is that D-A-S-H? Yes. L-I-N-G? L-A-N-E. Oh, dash lane. Okay, and you pay a yearly maintenance thing on that, or free? Free. Okay, I like that because the other ones were okay. So, all right, we'll do that. Settings. I've got Outlook 2007 that I'm running on the machine, and I bought 2012, 2013 Outlook. Right. And when I put 2013 in, I couldn't change the color scheme that was on there. Is there any way you can export the settings? And it's what I mean to the color scheme. When you open Outlook, there's like a blue and a yellow background, so email was easy to read and stuff. When I went to 2013, it was like black and white. There's all kinds of ways that you can change that. How do you, there's no easy way, there's no fast way to tell you over the air, is there? Well, the, one, there's no way to export those settings, but uh, it's not uh, real hard to change. It's so, not. No, you just got to get into the view settings and you can change whatever you want. The uh, V settings, is that what you said, Mike? View? View, view settings, I got you. Okay, view settings. Okay. Um, and last but not least, I'm still using Acronis for backup. Okay. I got 2014. But that thing is is driving me nuts. Is is it worth it to upgrade to 2016 on a Cronus, or what do you use? Do you what? use the Windows backup version? What version of Windows do you have? Uh, I got uh, 10 right now. Yeah, use the built-in. Backup. Use the built-in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and last but not least is a. Uh, uh, I said three questions. I'm going to make. Uh, That's three questions, Cap. No, just go ahead. I'm just oh kidding. man, so I'm, just <laughs> business. I'm dying on this Windows upgrade. I went from Server 2003 to 2008 to 2012, 2016. I got ten licenses. Do the math on that in the last three years. Right. And and so as a small businessman, I mean that's. Ten thousand dollars out of pocket. I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot. We talked about this earlier in the show. Yeah. Yes, I know. I just I'm encouraging you to, to do the Linux stuff. But here's my question: I have programs that run off the server. Okay, so I have a program that does dental stuff, like it does specific X-ray stuff. Right. There's another database that uh, would this stuff all run in a Linux environment? Probably. Probably. Okay. I all need. Right, so. You should call me sometime, Kevin, and I can I, go down there and take a look, and then you'll know. I will know. do that. I, I come down to see Rob. You're not there, but you're always out working, man. So that's what I do, man. I know, man. Listen, thank you, man. That's why I can't come down to see you. So thank you guys for a great show. I always enjoy it. Thanks for everything you do for the community here. You guys are wonderful. Thank Have you, a good Kevin. Day. Thanks, Mike. Take care. Bye bye. You know, Kevin, he, he's a he's a hyper dude. Yeah, but he's again, he's, he's one of my he's favorite, favorite colors. Color, right. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's all right. I just you know, he's so entertaining. We got to get him to to like actually let me go in and do stuff for him. So, Kevin, yeah. this is your peer pressure from everyone that's listening. That, uh, Shun the non-believer. That, that, no, no. <laughs> that, uh, you yeah, know, let me come down there and take a look. Anyway, thanks for listening to this hour of the Computer Guru Show. We'll be back right after the top of the hour here for more of your calls. So stick around, 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show. Thanks again to Perfection Auto Works for helping us out and, and, and supporting the show. We appreciate them, and as we appreciate you. Stick around for more information. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology problems and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040. Oh, I can tell I had the monster. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm speaking too quickly. Let me slow it, let me slow it down here. Um, all right, 790-2040. So why, why are you holding up hand signals at me? You want me to do number three? Okay. Let's do number three. Let's do some calls. Let's, let's do that. 
<laughs> this is why I have a producer. Yeah. Right? And this is the, the board up. How you doing, Madeline? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, you, ha- you were on the phone with somebody regarding emails and errors that were coming back to them. I keep getting system administrator. It didn't go through. And I know that the email address was right, so I delete it. I wait a few minutes, and I go back to it, and then it goes through. What's this admini- system administrator? Well, there's more detail in that message, which would be sort of vital to me telling you what's going on. So next time you get one of those, forward one to me. You can just forward that message to me, and I can tell you why it's failing. Okay. Uh I'm not at home right now, but I can go to the your website and do it that way? You can if you like, or you can just remember radio at azcomputerguru.com. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. All right, I appreciate the call. Okay. Yeah, in, the, in those messages, there's a bunch of detail that is going to let us know where in the process it's failing and why. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that message will be really helpful. Okay, I, I will definitely do that. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for the call, okay. Madeline, and we'll go to the next call. And that's Pat. Hello, Pat. How are you? Hi, I'm fine, I think. Um, my, I've gotten the update, the Windows anniversary update on my Windows 10 machine. Now, every time I turn it on, I get a message that some app is out of date, and I keep getting this message. I've deleted the, okay, and now they've all gone away. I have no idea what the app is. It's Intel RWIDI. Intel R W I D I. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And it, that message comes up in the little corner where the notifications are whenever I turn the machine on. Now, typically, you can click on those notifications, and it'll actually take you to a section that will fix itself. Well, it says your app does not work with Windows 10. The app you're trying to use was blocked from opening because it might damage your PC or result in loss of data. Blah blah. Go to the support website for the app developer. Well, I don't know what, okay, I could type in Intel RWIDI and it's wireless something or other. Well, Otherwise, it, it works. Intel RWIDI. Right. So Intel, parentheses R, close parentheses, capital WI, capital DI. Okay. Uh, I'm just doing a little Google searching okay. while, while you're talking there. Um so, yeah, if there are drivers that are incompatible, you should probably go in and uninstall those. They're going to be in the program list, the, the Intel ones, because Intel always puts their stuff in the add, remove programs list. So, so if I go to, let's so see. If I you right-click on the Start button and go to Control Panel, then go to Programs, there's a Remove a Program or Uninstall a Program there. And you can scroll through that list and find the Intel you know, why die drivers, and you can uninstall those. Okay, I am trying to find my control panel. Um, type control panel in the search box. I thought that's what I did. Well, you can just right-click on the start button and then okay. select control panel. Okay, right-click on the start button, and there's, okay, thank you. I'm going to have to write that down so I remember. That's the quick way to get around now. Okay, so... Wait, pro, uninstall. So if I go to programs and I choose uninstall a program, and I'm looking through for something called what I saw Intel RWI. Okay, I see it there. So I just right. So if you remove that, then your error message will go away. Okay, I just have I remove it, and if it need if something else needs to be there, the great heads at Windows will tell me. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, they'll stop complaining about that piece anyway. <laughs> Okay, so if I do a right-click on the item I need to get rid of and I click on uninstall, that's all I need to do, right? That's what I would do. Okay. And then reboot and see if you get any other errors. All right, we'll do that then. Um, One other thing with the Windows anniversary, I used to be able to go and see what my updates were, and so after the Windows anniversary it says there are no updates because this is a new, it's a total new new install of the system? Sort of. Okay. Um, because, yeah, I could not see any update history of things that had happened before that. Right. As soon as you do the, uh, the anniversary update, it, it thinks it's it, – basically, it is a new install of Windows. Okay. So there are no compatible updates that are in history. Okay. I'm it's, not sure that I intended to install the anniversary, but it happens. So you didn't have a choice. So that's all good. 
Oh, okay. All right. Thanks a lot, then, Mike. Appreciate the call. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Let's talk about the anniversary update for a second. Um, the the anniversary update, by the way, is effectively the first service pack for Windows 10, and I cannot stress enough how helpful it has been on the three computers that I have Windows 10 on as far as it fixed a lot of problems that I was having. And, you know, I've complained sort of often about the problems that I had in Windows 10, and they're all sort of minor annoyances dealing with mostly how video works, right, the screen works, Mm -hmm. where my icons are getting rearranged all the time or, like, Google Hangouts does not not work properly uh, prior to the anniversary update. And it seems to have fixed all of that stuff. And so... I have to say uh, thank you, Microsoft, for doing that. Of course, there are a bunch of downsides in the anniversary update, which we'll get into on another another episode, but it's interesting. Did they just push that? Yeah, it was like, last week they pushed the anniversary okay. update. I just got an update that seemed to take fairly long Yeah, yesterday. Yeah, that was the anniversary update. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and move to the next call. Let's go ahead and talk to Larry. Hello, Larry. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Not bad. What can I do for you? Well, I have a problem. Um, I turn my uh, laptop on, and I also turn on my UPS. And, uh, and anyways, uh, the machine went in, you know, was going to boot up. And the problem is now, it seems like the, the boot sector or the file for the boot is not corrupted or that because now I get a flashing. Mine is an HP and keeps flashing. And um, I have the I made a clone of the seventh. Uh, Windows 7, and I, before I, and for, and, you know, the, um, Windows 10 on, so I had a backup, basically, of the old operating system. Okay. And I put that one in there, and the rest of the machine works. It's just a hard drive, or I should say the solid state drive. And I think it's the, uh, the boot sector or, or the boot program. It's not got corrupted or something. All right, so what kind of a backup did you have? I just cloned it. Oh, I have I, I have um, iDrive uh, online for backup. Okay, and when you did your clone, how did you do that? Oh, I'll probably have a program that uh, copied the whole thing. What kind of copy are we talking about, though? Uh, well, let me just pull it out here. Oh, I had done this before. Uh, it's a call an upgrade suite. Because um, there's two different types of drive cloning. Right there is the file copy clone, which it just makes a copy of the drive and uh, just copies files from one drive to the other. And then there's something called an image clone, where it does like a sector by sector backup of the drive. I just did sector by sector. Okay. Because I watched the, the number of sectors being copied. Okay. So you, did you restore that? Is that what you said you did? You restored that? No, clone? no. I, I, I'll just, it's the problem. The South State Drive that has the Windows 10 on. It's the ones I have in Pro. Right. Okay. Basically, I made I had Windows 7 on there. I made a clone of 7 and then upgraded to Windows 10. Okay. So I had a backup. Okay. So that was uh, on the 28th. I uh, did that the day before the deadline. And then, uh, you know, it's been working just fine, what have you. And when I powered up the laptop, and then I also turned on my uh, uninterrupted power supply uh, because the machine was in going into the boot, you know, section, and something happened. It's flashing uh, HP available, and press the um, the uh, escape key to get, uh, you know, in fact, into the uh, the BIOS, basically. Okay. All right. Uh, so there's a couple different things that I would try first. Do you okay. have a, like, a bootable? Can, will it let you get into the recovery section of the, the machine? Well, I, well, let me see here. Because when you turn it on, it should, if it if it's just cycling, you should be able to hit... Shift okay. F, Shift F8, yeah. and it should take you to a recovery menu where you have the option to repair the machine. If it gives you the well, option, 
if it gives well, you the I option to go to the recovery section, then you can potentially fix the boot sector there. Okay. If not, well, then you're going to need a bootable device, right? Either a Windows 10 bootable CD or a Windows 10 bootable memory stick to get to the recovery section to rebuild the boot sector. Okay. Now, if you can't do either of those, if neither option work for you, then you either have drive corruption on sort of a massive scale, um, and you might need to just recover either your old install from your clone or uh, replace the drive. just sort well, of depends on what is, the problem is. Uh, okay. Well, the thing is, though, I had Windows 7 on, and I plugged it as an external drive, so I was able to access the, the update the updated files, you know, for what, for a couple of weeks. That's, you know, I was using Windows 10. Right. So, to me, that is this, the, the boot sector that's corrupted in that. So, well, anyways, I, I, I press escape and it gave me uh, information like system information, system diagnostic, HP spark, spare keys, boot device option. Bio setup. All right, none of those are oh. none of those are going to be the recovery section. That's, that's how about HP recovery? That'll take it back to its factory image if it has one. Um, so that'll take you back to the operating system that was installed on the machine when you purchased it. Oh. So that puts it back to that's that's all pre Windows stuff. You need to be in the uh, next next menu, which is the Windows recovery section. Okay. Well, let's do this. Then. So here's what you're going to do, Larry. Because okay. this is radio. And I know. so what's going to happen here is that you can try to get to that recovery section. If you need help still, we can do it for you. We can fix it for you if you like. Um, or we do phone calls for a limited time. You can get a, a certain amount of technical support help for free by calling the office. Okay. So if you if you want to go that route, you can. Or you can send in an email to radio at azcomputerguru.com, and I'm happy to help you out however I can. Um, but it sounds to me like you're going to need a recovery disk to solve your problem here. Hmm. So good luck, Larry, and give me a call and let me know how it turns out for you. Okay, thank you very much. All Have right. a good day. Appreciate the call. we got to take a break. When we get back, more of your phone calls at 790-2040. We'll be right back. Your computer guru, Mike Swanson, is here to help you tame that beast of a machine. Join the chat right now at guruShow.com or call in. This is the Computer Guru Show on KVOY, The Voice. I'm nerdy in the extreme and whiter than sour cream. I was in a V club and glee club and even the chess team. Only question I ever thought was hard. What do I like, Kirk, or do I like Picard? Spend every weekend at the Renaissance Fair. Got my name on my underwear. They see me strolling. They laughing. Welcome back to the Computer Guru Show. My name is Mike, here to deal with your technology needs and treat you like a person in the process. 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show. And we'll talk to Charles. Hello, Charles. How are you? No, I feel more like a person already. Excellent. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Yay. So, two questions. One kind of about learning and the other about uh, a piece of hardware. Learning question. Uh, recently, I had a computer that I used. Uh, upgraded without my knowledge to Windows 10, and there was a very sharp learning curve about you know how you open things. It's a little different, and once I've been working on it for a few days, it's it's not really difficult to do. It's it's not that big a deal. Um, either I'm getting a little better at using the computer, or maybe Windows got a little bit more intuitive. Microsoft got a little more intuitive about the way they design the system. Is there some kind of an overall philosophy you can look at, or a way that when they because obviously upgrades will always come sometimes against our will. Is there a way of figuring it out? Or is there sort of a guiding principle to figuring out how a Windows system works that they use, some development philosophy, something? Uh, well, there, with the exception of Windows 8, there is a, a very sort of uh, common through line through all of the versions of, of Windows. They, they, they tend to follow the same sort of formula. 
uh, Windows 8 was a was a departure from that. But um, getting back to you know Windows 10 is sort of going back to the Windows XP, Windows 7 way of doing things. Um, so there is a general philosophy on how things should work at, at Microsoft. Uh, they're just trying to see how far they can push those boundaries without making people angry. Well, is there like a blog I can read or a you know like a good you know like Windows for Dummies kind of thing I can read to kind of figure out what that philosophy is? Yeah, sort of. Um, there's not much in the way of like really decent books that will explain what's going on. At least not the ones that I think are worth the money. There, there are a bunch of you know Windows whatever for dummies, or the 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 Complete Idiot's Guide, which is actually I think better than the Windows for Dummy. All right. Um, the other option is that if you really want to sort of get a feel for how this stuff works and and be more proficient at it. Um, we've been sort of in talks with New Horizons about sending people over to them for learning. Uh. Um, and they go really in depth where, you know, you'll take a, a real course on how things work within Windows. Oh. And, uh, it, I think it's worth it. So, okay. I mean, it, I, if you're willing to just sort of put the time into it, you're going to figure it out on your own anyway, even without the books. Yeah, I call it learning by stumble, which is really how I learned to use a computer over the years. The other thing I was going to ask you is uh, you mentioned that you don't like Seagate, and I get that, but um, you didn't mention who you do like. I mean, who do you like for... I want to get like a terabyte or so, more than it could be less, uh, hard drive backup so that I can put several computers, I can copy the hard drives of several computers and have it, I guess you call it formatted, so that it has different segments where you can have, you know, backups of all your computers on it. Okay. So depending on the the source machine, there's a bunch of different ways to deal with that. But it, as to get to the core of the question here, uh, as far as the drives that I like, uh, HGST is the best brand that's out there by reliability. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're not readily available anywhere locally. Those are ones that you have to order. Um, so Western Digital is the the one that we recommend for things that you can pick up at the store. Okay. And then the one last thing I want to ask you is I'm having a hard time a hard time learning uh, loading Pong on my Commodore 64. I'll take your tips over the air. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Thanks for the call, Charles. I appreciate Get it. Get yourself an Atari flashback. <laughs> That's what you need to do. Buy one of those. It's got 72 games on it, readily available. Boom, done. With Pong. Yep. Look at that. Tara has something that... I finally got to answer a question. I'm yeah, so excited. There you go. Woot, woot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tara. She sits over here so bored. Nobody calls to talk to Tara. They should no. just, somebody should call and talk to Tara. Nah. It's cool. It's not my show, so it's cool. But there was one more question that you got to answer. Oh, regarding the external backups. Yes. Yeah, because it was in the chat, and I said I wouldn't answer it mm-hmm. in here. Because the in in Audrey was it Audrey? Yes. So uh, had asked earlier in the show in the chat. By the way, you can get to GuruShow dot com slash chat if you want to check it out. Um, had asked uh, about external hard drives, and that's where the whole Seagate Western Digital thing came from. And then the follow up question later was, well, how big should this be? And I said that your backup device should be twice the size of your storage on your machine. And they said, why? And then I was like, I'm not typing all that in the chat, (laughs) Uh, at least not during the show. So here's the answer. Here's why. Uh, Most backups, especially things like the the Time Machine backups and uh, if you're using the Windows 10 built-in backups, they do something called versioning. It's where... Every so often, on the Macs, it's every 10 minutes. On the PCs, it's every 30 minutes. It makes a new snapshot of anything that's changed since the last time the backup happened. So anything that's changed in the last 10 or 30 minutes, depending on which operating system you have, is then saved to that external device. So it gives you the ability to go back in time incrementally to say, well... Um, this change happened to this file on this date and time. What if I want to go back to the one that was from the day before that Mm -hmm. or the day before that or the week before that? 
So having that extra space in there allows it to do not only the full image backup where it's grabbing everything on the machine, but any changes that are made since then. Okay. So you'll want to have at least enough space for that to happen. So I say, at a minimum, you should have twice the amount of storage available for backup that you have for regular storage. There you go. And there is the answer without me having to type a whole lot. Excellent. Hopefully that helps you out, Audrey. Let's hope so. <laughs> Let's hope so. That's it. You only get two questions per, per show, Audrey. That's it. No more. I'm just kidding. Yeah. You can ask, you can that rule's questions. been broken like eight times today. So. I know. People are like, yeah, I have. I just have two questions. And six questions later, I'm looking at you, Kevin. I'm looking well, at you. You know, one thing leads to another. Yeah. Got another question. It makes sense. Yeah. All right. Fine. Fine if you want me to explain things to you. <laughs> I guess that is sort of what the show is about. <laughs> yeah, just a tad. 790-2040 if you want to be part of the show. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, hopefully more of your questions, and then we won't bore you to death. This is the Computer Guru Show. We'll be right back. Whether you're dealing with hardware installation or, heaven forbid, a virus, no. 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 Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. So call in or chat in with yours. The website, gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is the Computer Guru Show on AM 1030 KVOY The Voice. Mike Swanson, your computer guru, is just a click away. Listen and watch at gurushow.com. This is the Computer Guru Show. So one of the recurring themes that we've been talking about over the last six months has been the ongoing debate about the master keys. Ah, uh, yes. So, you know, we talked about how the, the government wanted to, Apple to install a backdoor key mm-hmm. so that they could unlock a device. Uh, and they were like, don't worry, bro, it's... We're not going to let We're it cool. out. We're cool, right? This is just just between you and me, right? And we'll only use it in emergencies. I like to imagine that they're dressed with like shades on and a trench coat when they're asking for the key. That's right, yo man. You want some keys? Yeah. Um, and of course, Apple said no, and uh, Microsoft has said no to such requests. They've said we're not we're not doing this. We're not allowing these these keys to get out into the world, and we're not even putting in back doors. But there is something on both Mac and PCs. It's called Secure Boot. Now, in Mac, it's got a different name. But basically, it... iBoot? <laughs> what it does is it checks the uh, the hardware and mm-hmm. makes sure that everything is really cool before they start the machine. It's really designed to make it so that you can't take a hard drive out of one computer, stick it into another computer, and fire it up and get out the data. That's what it's really designed for. And in conjunction with full drive encryption, it is really, really effective. So if, if you really want to protect your stuff, full drive encryption, secure boot on, keeps everything from from being gnarly on your computer. Well, and that's especially how the Mac phones, the iPhone, and the all of the Microsoft mobile devices, either the phones or the tablets, it's how they protect themselves from either infections and or other types of malicious software. Well, Microsoft accidentally leaked the golden keys for mobile. And uh, they didn't mean to, just sort of slipped out there. And so now there's all kinds of exploits out there for the Microsoft mobile devices. Now, Microsoft has a fix for this already, so if you get your updates, it can, can solve that problem. There's a new set of keys and and everything's wonderful. But the cat's out of the bag. And this is one of those, those reasons that we were, at least on this show, I was pretty vocal about there should never be a backdoor built into these systems. There should never be a set of keys that will allow anyone access to the devices. Now, we know that those keys exist uh, as far as the booting of the system is concerned, the startup is concerned, and there's no way around that. If you want to protect the 
the device and have it start, this this is the way you have to do it. Um, but the come on, Microsoft, what are you doing? What are you doing, man? You, you, you're better than this. So you know, just anyway, if you have a mobile device, you should get your updates sort of immediately to pre- prevent any type of nefariousness happening on your mobile device. Um, so if you have a, a Microsoft phone or a Microsoft, because uh, I think there's like, what, 12 people have a Microsoft phone? I used to. All right. So. Uh, but if you have a Microsoft tablet, like a Surface, uh, any of the any of the Surfaces, especially the, the RTs, you should get those updated as quickly as possible to, you know, make everything safe. There you go. Right on. Let's take a call and we're going to talk to Mark. Hello, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. How can I help you? Hey, thanks for going to the uh, the two hours. I, I really enjoy it. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to uh, hear you guys squabble and uh, give us information for two fun free hours. Fun free, yeah. huh? Well, <laughs> kind, of, kind of kind of the free. soulless fun without <laughs> fun two hours. Sucked it right out of you. <laughs> I have a question for Tara. Okay. My wife is an avid, and when I say avid, I'm talking almost twenty four seven Destiny player. Okay. And she's continually complaining that she cannot find good quality players uh, in the female uh, persuasion. Yeah. <laughs> and I was wondering if there's a, uh, is there a website that you can go to where she can hook up with uh, uh, women of like mind that, that want to play and forget the politics <clears throat> there's, and basically get down to business? There's actually a lot of them. Um, if can you, you name a couple that I can write down, please. Uh, player dot me. Player dot me is a social community for gamers uh-huh. of all persuasions, and there's a lot of females on there. Um, something that she might—I don't know if she's aware or not—but uh, a lot of girls will actually pretend to be males in yeah. game, well, just so I that they don't get harassed. That, that that allow her to speak mm-hmm. um, as a as a male. The pro- the problem is is that you just can't you can't hide who you really are. Yeah. And men for some reason are so uh, when it comes to gaming there there's just, just something wrong with them. Oh, it's they com- don't competition. seem to like playing with females. It's and, competition and, guys, and territory is really what it comes down to. Right. I remember uh, maybe it was last year you guys did a really good um, uh, show on uh, females that uh, are basically you know they're they're uh, trotting upon. Uh, from uh, male gamers, um, it's, a, it's an excellent subject. People don't seem to realize. I never realized it until my wife tells me how rotten the male persuasion is towards female gamers, mm-hmm. and it's a big problem. And um, she doesn't necessarily want to play with females. She just wants to play with people that have the game set in mind. And Destiny is a fantastic game. I'm sure you've played it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, she's like a level 40. I mean, she's top of the heap, and she's extremely good, but men just don't seem to uh, you know, to give her the respect that she deserves just because she's that good. So you've got player.me, mm-hmm. and what was the second recommendation? Um, I can't find. There's a not in the kitchen anymore is a good site. Not in the kitchen, huh? <laughs> not in the kitchen anymore.com. It's a, a female gamer that uh, she she talks about. This kind of stuff as well, but mm-hmm. I mean, if she googles it, she can find communities of female gamers. There's several and, and of them. She has, but she's come up pretty pretty darn low. Okay. Um, she's she's quite adequate when it comes to uh, resourcing, and uh, I've not heard of this. Not in the kitchen. Uh, the player dot me sounds familiar, but again, do you have any recommendations for a female gamer? That uh, how do you approach male gamers without getting uh, the the eye rolling and the uh, and the guys just want to be the guys type thing. How do you personally do it when you play? Um, I don't know. That's a that's a difficult question because honestly, most of the time I don't talk. I don't talk to other people. Right, and she tries not to. But there, when you're doing P, uh, uh, is it PP, uh, uh, PVP? PVP, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to you you have to uh, you're going into a um, an area where you have to command. And you have to tell people where you're going and what you're doing, and you have no choice. I don't know how true that is. I mean, I I used to play lots of like MMO games, mm-hmm. and I never had a microphone. And yeah. that's just 
sort of the so way I always operate. PvP in Destiny, it is extremely. Um, I mean, you're going into battle. You, you're, you're going into a raid. Uh, they call them raids, but uh, but the bottom line is you you have to communicate with your counterparts. You, you'll have seven people in a raid that are on your team. You got A team versus B team, and uh, you're going through these areas where you you have no choice. You have to communicate. I mean, it, 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 you, is you she playing it on? The, is she playing it on PS4 or Xbox? Uh, we have both. Okay. And that's where probably the difference that's, for me is That's that mainly the problem right there is the console. Yeah, I play through, mostly through, uh, on Xbox? Uh, on both Xbox and PlayStation 4 you get a lot a lot more um, aggression between players. Whereas okay. I play more on PC. I'm a PC well, gamer. Well, I'm in the process of building her a complete um, a game room. Um, we've got furniture coming. Uh, we've completely redesigned. Uh, it's a complete workstation for gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a complete pod station. I don't know if you've seen these things, but it's yeah. really cool. I would suggest that. So bottom line. I would suggest that your your best solution to find higher quality players is, is to, to go PC. Go PC. Well, that's what we're that's what we're doing. Well, nope, that's that's pretty much the best solution. Because there's a bunch of really angry twelve year olds on there the are. on the consoles. So I would say that, uh, not to mention, you can use keyboard for communication, which is how I have always played. And we were doing 40-man raids when I was playing. And uh, always use just keyboard for communication. I, gotcha. I don't want to talk to you. Man. And more importantly, I don't want to hear anybody. Yeah, right, so, <laughs> pretty much. So there's there's a certain a certain amount of every time that I have been over to someone's house where they say, oh, you got to check out this game, and I'll go over and they they're a console player. Just mm-hmm. listening to the voice chat. Oh, is, you mean to the it, crushing you're to the to soul? Trying to do PvP and the guys eating Cheetos. Yep. Well, it's, it's just soul crushing meanness, right? It, right. My poor mother is, apparently has experienced so many things because of what these other people are saying. <laughs> All right. It's horrible. It's it's it, the whole point is to get away from the consoles because okay. I think the consoles, in well, my it's opinion, a lot are of fun in some players. respects, Mike, because you can play with people in Australia. She's played with people in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Same with the all PCs. Over the world. It's it's really cool technology. Same with the PCs, but you get a higher quality of player. Okay, very cool. Well, I appreciate the advice, guys. Have a great Saturday. Take care. All right. Thanks, thanks for the call. Let's go ahead and move on to Ralph. Hello, Ralph. How are you? Morning, Mike. Um, I just came out of a lengthy contract renegotiation with Comcast last night where I felt like I was talking to Rod Tidwell in the movie Jerry Maguire. He's screaming at me, show me the money. Right. And uh, so my question for you is, what are the obstacles? What needs to occur for Google Fiber to be introduced into Pima County? I think I understand the Tucson issues, but what's the, what needs to occur for that? Uh, to happen, and and I'll hang up and listen uh, offline. I don't think that there's enough population density outside of Tucson in Pima County to make it happen. And really, uh, unfortunately, I don't think that that's I I think that's the sad sad truth about the thing. Because Google wants to be able to when they are doing their installs, it has to meet two criteria. One, the build out has to be able to pay for itself at some point, and secondly. They have to be able to offer a certain amount of internet to the poor for free, right? Because that's part of their mission statement with Google Fiber is that they are trying to provide internet to the masses at no cost, or at low cost anyway. So um, Google actually, Google Fiber has a, a backup plan to that, which is that they are working on a rollout of national, nationwide high-speed wireless internet to the entire country over the next year and a half. So we'll see if that actually happens because then they get around all of the rules as far as uh, not allowed to put wires, they don't have to worry about leasing, they don't have to worry about any of that stuff. They can provide that internet to, high-speed internet to anyone. So the follow-up question then would be, outside of Google Wireless, is there a a political part of the equation that prevents more competition from being introduced to compete against Comcast in Pima County. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And and there's a cost issue, right? The population density is going to be your biggest factor when it comes to Pima County as a whole. Uh-huh. Right? Because, you know, you've got a million people in Tucson and the immediately surrounding areas, but Pima County is also giant, and uh, there's 
what if you add the the not surrounding areas, <laughs> right, it takes you up to like a million and a half. So there's not really a whole lot of people in Pima County, and it's a very large space. It would be very expensive to put stuff in there, in a meaningful okay. way, anyway. Um, I think that if you really want to be able to to make Tucson or Pima County more viable, we have to work on the political aspects of Tucson first to be able to say, okay, this is where we can make some money, right, where a, a competitor can come in and make a real change here, a real difference. And that would, of course, propagate to Pima County as a whole. Okay, that's the answer I was looking for, and thank you so very much, Mike. Thank you for the call. We're going to go ahead and take a quick break, and then when we get back, we're going to have more of your phone calls at 790-2040. Give us a call. Let's see if we can help you out. Computer troubles? Need some advice? Call in now. Mike Swanson will be back after these messages. The Computer Guru Show, AM 1030, KBOI, The Voice. For technology guru, Mike Swanson is answering all your questions one by one. Yes, science! So chime in with yours. The website is gurushow.com. Tune in, click in, and kick back. This is The Computer Guru Show. According to the National Advertising Board, Comcast should stop saying that they deliver the fastest Internet in America. I love this story. This just makes <laughs> me happy. Um, and it's you'll hear it, especially I, I encourage everyone to listen to the I Tried to Cancel Comcast recordings that are on YouTube. Um, just because you get to hear them say it so, so often. It is, um, it's sad and and it's not true. Um it's just not. Mm-hmm. No matter how they slice it, they do offer a, a varying levels of speed. Um, but the Comcast is just lying when they say that they offer the fastest in-home Wi-Fi and the fastest Internet in America because they don't even touch Google Fiber. They uh, are, in most cases, slower than Cox in in general areas, so they should probably stop saying that. And it's just like my complaint with CenturyLink, where they should stop calling it high-speed Internet yeah, it's, altogether. Yeah, it's definitely not. Because it is not. It is sort of moderately quick Internet, maybe, depending on how far away you live. And that's it. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> so I'm glad that the National Advertising Board is calling them out on it and saying, stop it, Comcast. Stop lying to your potential customers. And stop lying to yourself. Yeah, no it's doubt. It's not healthy. <laughs> Don't you care about yourself, Comcast? I'm just saying. <laughs> They're just hurting themselves. They're good. in denial. That was very good, Tara. I like it. All right, let's go ahead and talk to Ray. Hello, Ray. How are you? Where's Ray? Is Ray silent? Hello? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. I just had a quick question. Uh I just started a small business, so I was wondering about getting websites made. Okay. Turns out we do that. Oh, you do? Yes, we do. Perfect. Okay. So we have a whole bunch of different options for that. Um, if you're, you know, you're just starting on what, what kind of business are you in, if you don't mind Contracting. me asking? Contracting. Contracting? Okay. Yeah. And you have no web presence right now? None. Okay. So for, we offer a something called an express site. For people with no web presence to begin with, and it just—it's like a starter website, and it's, it has a bunch of pages about who you are, and uh, we'll fill it with your content, and you can have it done in a week, and it's five hundred bucks. Wow, perfect. Yeah, so it's—it's it's cheap. It helps you get started, and then as you your complexity, you know, you'll you're going to need a more complex site in the future to be able to talk about you because you know you're awesome. Why not? Uh, so then we we offer plans that are different and you can get a better site and you can just upgrade from where you're at perfect so i would suggest you call in and talk to rob on monday at 304-8300 and he can help you out with that rob yep rob's the web guy over there thank you so much i appreciate the call right thank you very much but <sighs> is the show over yet <laughs> I'm having one of these days, man. Yeah. This is I can, I can play music. <laughs> yeah, let's just do music for the last <laughs> six <laughs> minutes. Last six minutes. Oh man, it's it's just been one of those days. I've got a headache. This whole week. 
this whole week has been long for me anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's been, been one thing after the other. Yeah. Uh oh, Kevin's calling in. Up, oh, Kevin. We're gonna have to see what what Kevin wants to say now. I, oh, oh, and he went away. Kevin hung up. He didn't want to say anything. What what's going on with that? Kevin, why? <laughs> what happened? Well, he called up and he wanted to uh, let Rob know that. He's going to be with, gone uh, for two weeks. With, with Kevin right now, so the other guy can't call Rob yet because he's going to be with Kevin. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right. All right, so um, 7-0-2040 if you want to get yourself in before we run out of show very, time here. Very tail end of the show. I, uh, I, I, I'm glad that you put this one in here. There was a, a, uh, a story that I posted about a Tesla owner talking about their experiences with the autopilot on a Tesla car. Mm-hmm. And most of the time when you see these, it is, this is where the autopilot has failed me and um, things were, were really bad. Um, and Tesla, why don't you make this product perfect? Uh, but it turns out that someone put it in, put in a, a story that talking about how autopilot saved them, which I thought was pretty interesting because there needs to be more of those. Because those, those are the ones that are statistically impossible to find. Is how many lives does the autopilot save versus how many errors does it have? And in this particular case, uh, this lady was talking about she's driving along in her Tesla and she you know, was using autopilot appropriately with her hands on the steering wheel as it's supposed to be. And a car very violently changed lanes into her. And the car reacted before she even saw what was happening slowed the car down enough that the the car that was trying to change lanes into her missed them just barely, um, but kept them from being involved in an accident. And that's actually a pretty interesting story, at least the way she told it. Well, yeah, because there was a car directly behind her as well, and she said she would have hit the brakes, which means that she would have got rear-ended. And the car didn't, it just slowed it down enough to let that crazy person get in front of her. And the thing is, is that, you know, I drive around a lot. Mm -hmm. I drive around, most of my day is is spent driving. And I've been trying to, you know, express to people that, you know, there's some golden rules when driving. And and the one is don't confuse those around you. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, it causes problems, causes accidents. And I'm thinking now that I have to be more vigilant about, at the end of the day, I need to pull the stick out of the, the dash cam and start uploading some of the craziness that I see. I mean, it's just there is there is no shortage of dumb people when mm-hmm. it comes to uh, driver's licenses. There's just no shortage. Yeah. I just cannot That's believe true. how many people drive crazy-like. I, I don't get it. It's like, come on, people. You know, just... I think it's complacency. I, well, you, I, you drive enough that you're like, yeah, well, I can, I can drive. This is a straight freeway, so I can drive it. Just put on cruise control, and yeah, I'll put on my lipstick, and then I'll be okay. I'll put on my lipstick and my mascara, and then I'll put on my lipstick, mascara, and eat a bean burrito. <laughs> I can read War and Peace right now. <laughs> no, unless it's you have complacency. a Tesla. You gotta have a Tesla if you're gonna do that. Yeah, but it's complacency. I don't know. It's just uh, there's a lot of people that I think that they just lack general awareness of whoever's around them. Well, right? that's, it's, that's part of it. There's a certain I am in my own bubble, and I'm I'm going to go ahead and make this left turn without looking. But, you know, you, you get away with something once, you think you're going to get away with it again, and you build on it. That's there, what I'm saying. There needs to be more discipline, right? you got to use that horn. You know, you got to tell people when they screw up because you got to stop it. <laughs> Thanks to our, our sponsor, Perfection Auto Works. We really appreciate you helping keep the show on the air. You can also help us keep the show on the air by going to patreon.com slash guru show or just go to guru, guru show.com and click the links. You can find ways to help support us. We really appreciate you listening and give the shop a call at 304-8300. We'll see you next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Computer Guru Show. If you did, please consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. Your subscription helps us reach new audiences and expand the show in new directions. Please also consider supporting us on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can help the Computer Guru Show expand into a longer format as well as support the production of new content for this channel. Links are in the description below, and thank you again. We'll see you next week.